Oh my god! Oh god damn! <laughs> Ooh, a beginner mods list! This one's gonna be fun. Chopped exhaust, tacky sticker bombs, and rim tape galore, right? Well, I'm not gonna stop you, but if you have taste, you'll leave that Busa Boy stuff at the door and modify your motorcycle right. One common misconception I'd like to clear right up from the outset is the idea that mods increase value. I can see why people think that. I mean, the slip-on Acra for your R3 cost $300, and you like it better, so surely it added $300 worth of value, right? Nope, it lowered the value. People want to buy stock bikes, not a project bike where they have to undo all the stuff you did. With that in mind, I've come up with five mods that you should do to your bike that aren't going to completely obliterate the bike's resale value, and more importantly, will keep you from wasting money on your motorcycle. It would suck to spend a bunch of money on some fancy airbox kit that claims to wake up your bike, only to have it feel the exact same, or more likely, ride like crap. We're gonna keep it to bolt-on parts that can be easily removed if you want to sell the bike, and that actually do something for your ride. Also, chances are, if it's on this list, we've installed it on one of our giveaway motorcycles, so if you're looking to get an idea of what that process might look like, we've probably got you covered. Speaking of which, have you checked out the new and improved YN Moto Shop? We've just added a parts finder, allowing you to search for aftermarket mods for your bike. We've got tail tidies, mirrors, tail bags, and more. Click the link down below to shop.yamanoob.co, enter your year, make, and model, and see what options we have. The best part is you'll be entered to win our giveaway motorcycles. Just pick the sweepstakes you want to be entered in, and you're all set. Every dollar you spend is an entry to win. We've still got all the riding gear you need to get started or upgrade your kit if you want, and we're adding more products all the time. The best part about it is if we've picked the gear we're stocking so you know it's not going to be some cheap junk. Your papa would not do you dirty like that. Click the link down below and check out shop.yamanoob.co. Okay, now before we get into the actual list, I want to preface it by saying that I'm going to give you what you should do and when to stop because there's that all important line where you're going to start spending a bunch of cash for no reason. The first and most obvious example is your exhaust system. I know I said it doesn't add value to the bike, but putting a new pipe on your bike can make it feel more exciting to ride. Let's be real, most of us get into bikes because they look cool with a sleek racy pipe and sound excellent when revving them to the moon. But then you buy your bike from a dealer and it comes to the whisper quiet exhaust that you can barely hear at a stoplight. If you're doubting how important a good exhaust note is to a rider, both Aprilia and Yamaha use aftermarket exhaust sounds in their marketing material so you can really hear the bike. And for their cross-plane twins, they both mention the sound as a selling point. So uncorking your bike is a great way to improve the feel and the look at the same time. If this is your first time looking for an exhaust, let me take you to school for a minute. You want to buy a slip-on exhaust, meaning that it's going to bolt up to the end of your catalytic converter. It should only take about two or three bolts to install on your bike, maybe 50 minutes if you've never done it before. When buying your new pipe, make sure you're buying one with a DB killer or baffle included. This is a little plug that sits inside the muffler and limits some of the more ear piercing sounds. It's more important on a full system, which we'll talk about in a second, but in a slip on it allows you to adjust how loud you want the bike to be. If it's too quiet, pop the baffle out, and if it's too loud, put it back in. Most times, if you're installing a slip on into a cat, you'll probably want to take the baffle out. The best part about slip-ons is that you don't need to tune your motorcycle, meaning they're a simple install and you're done. No opening your bike and fiddling with computer programs. Now here's what you don't do. Don't buy a full exhaust system, don't tune your beginner bike, and don't buy a bunch of power adders. Let's start with that full system. These are race pipes designed to be used in closed courses and oftentimes in environments where there's no limit on decibels. They work best at high RPM since they're functionally just straight pipes, and they include a DB killer is meant to increase back pressure and keep the pipe legal for DB restricted tracks. They're always way more expensive, require tunes or flashes to work properly, and are way too loud for the street. They're also not going to improve the power much on a beginner bike, you might squeeze two or three more horsepower out of a properly tuned R3, which is only going to make a difference if you're going racing. Unsurprisingly, there's a limit to the power that can be made by these little engines. Number two, get some comfort mods. As a noob, you're not going to be able to stop riding your bike. You're going to be closing your eyes and seeing yourself bombing down a twisty road. You'll sit in your cubicle at the office, and instead of filing your TPS reports or whatever the hell it is that office workers do, you'll be spending your time on Google Maps looking for more roads to explore. 
If you're going to be spending a bunch of time in the saddle on your bike, why not add a few creature comfort mods to make the experience more enjoyable? The best place to start is with the seat. Most manufacturers cut costs on the seat, but then offer an upgraded comfort seat as an optional $300 extra. But before you hit up the parts catalog, check out what you can find in the aftermarket. Companies like Saddleman, Corbin, and Seat Concepts make simple drop-in replacements for your bike that'll make even the most uncomfortable supermoto a bike you can spend all day on. Personally, I replaced the seat on my WR250 with an aftermarket one from Seat Concepts, and my taint thanks me every time I ride that bike. You can go a bit further with bar risers, heated grips, and more if you're looking to increase the seat time in the colder months. Fun things to skip in the comfort departments are huge and different windscreens. A lot of people think that different shaped windscreens make a big difference in their riding experience, but the reality is, is that you're riding a sport bike or a naked bike, the windscreen you would want to get would get the wind blasted to clear your helmet would be so huge that it would border on the absurd. Even ADV bikes with their massive windscreens and adjustable heights can often make the air moving around your head worse than if it wasn't there in the first place. If you want a taller windscreen, do it for looks and not for comfort. Speaking of looks, number three are aesthetic mods to your bike. This is where things go off the rail most of the times, not unlike our beloved Gixxer 250. Look, I get it, beauty is in the eye of the beholder and stuff, but I really urge you to take it easy on the aesthetic mods. The ones you should take a look at are things like tail tidies, which are plug and play systems, cleaning up your license plate bracket on your bike. You can also look into low profile LED blinkers which are just as bright as stock incandescents but in a smaller package. Removing your mirrors is a common smooth brain mod unless you replace them with bar end mirrors and block off plates. One thing to remember is when you're doing these kinds of mods is to keep your stock parts in a box somewhere you can replace them easily. You might drop the bike and break them so it's nice to have a spare set lying around or if you go to sell it you can revert the bike back to stock. Don't chop off parts or cut into your bike's wiring harness, that's one way to a hefty repair bill. Things you should never ever put on your motorcycle are cheapo colored levers and matching foot pegs. It might seem cool to get matching red levers to go with your red motorcycle, but you're going to regret those levers eventually, and I will make fun of you on YouTube. They don't have the same feeling as the stock ones, they'll wobble in your perch, and a lot of them have breakaway parts that work themselves loose over time, leaving you with a lever that flops back and forth while you're riding. Not to mention cheap anodized parts fade in the sun. If you want colored hardware, spend the money on quality parts, but in my opinion, you should just save your money. Unless you're on a KCM, then every orange anodized part adds one horsepower. That's just a fact. Some of these other things to avoid are sticker bombs, rim tape, and other half-baked artistic ideas you might have. Don't paint all over your gas tank or something like that. If your bike is a plain black, that doesn't mean it was a blank canvas for you to cover in heavy metal stickers. Just be cool with the stealthy black bike and be done with it. Only noobs and busa boys go for sticker bombs. Number four, case savers, frame and axle sliders and other sacrificial parts. You're a noob and you're gonna drop your bike. It's okay, everyone does. I still drop my bikes from time to time, but I'm not worried about it because I've installed case savers and axle sliders on my bikes. What these are are soft plastic parts that are meant to hit the ground first before your fairings, engine cases, levers, axles, or whatever. The almost always easily bolt on parts that'll keep your bike looking nice even if you drop it at a stoplight. Now it's worth pointing out that these are meant mostly for slow speed tip overs and driveway spills. If you low side, don't expect your bike to come out 100% intact. It'll probably still be rideable and holding all its fluids, but it'd probably be pretty rashed up. Regardless, they're still worth having on your bike to keep it a little bit safer in case of a spill. Remember though, you don't want engine mounted frame sliders. These are very bad and some reputable companies sell them. Don't be fooled though, they're not proper frame sliders. Engine mount sliders, as the name implies, uses the engine mounting points and those are not where you want to be putting the weight on your motorcycle. In some cases, they're usually soft aluminum which can crack too much if weight is put on them. Your frame on the other hand is probably steel on your beginner bike which is designed to handle a lot more of a load. If you have an aluminum frame, you might want to look for sliders that mount to two points to spread the load out just a bit. Last up today are tires. A quality set of rubber on your motorcycle can completely transform your riding experience. Most beginner bikes come with bargain bin tires designed to stick to the road when the bike is standing upright and with a few degrees of lean. They'll feel numb or mute or maybe even a bit heavy to turn in. If you start pushing them, they'll give up a lot sooner than you might expect, but that's only for relevant for track use. By comparison, a nice set of Bridgestone S22s for sport tires, sport bikes, Pirelli Rally Scorpions for adventure bikes, and Pirelli Angel DT2s or Michelin Pilot 5 for sport tours will feel a lot better. 
Some bikes are coming with these stock nowadays, but not all of them. You'll notice an increased grip and feel to the tire as well as better life. Cheap tires tend to not last as long because they're made with lower quality materials. What you don't want to do when your tires reach the end of their lifespan is hit up Amazon and prime yourself the cheapest Shinkos you can find. Tires are not the place to scrimp and save your pennies. Think about your riding style and the things you want to do with your bike and buy the right rubber to suit the task. No good tires don't come cheap and yes, they're worth the extra money. Fact, when a man allegedly found a dead mouse in the can of his Mountain Dew, Pepsi had an expert claim in an affidavit that the drink was so acidic that it would have dissolved the mouse after 30 days. Jesus Christ. Goodbye. Now, partner, I gotta tell you, it's real good seeing you here at the end of this year Yam and Noob video. It's me, Cowboy Yam, aka Yosemite Yam, back at it once again. And uh, you click this video right over here, do me a little solid, okay? You made it to the end of the video, do me a little favor here, click this video, keep watching yourself some of this incredible Game of Noob content. It's pretty good.